Salut, intravis. It's a santé d'entendre, Chris. Now, if you're not familiar with my channel or you don't speak French, you probably don't know what I just said. But if you are either of those, you can probably figure out from context that I'm Travis and this is Curious Tangents, and today we'll be discussing language. Now, the syntax or the arrangement and rhythms of a sentence don't change that much from French to English which is why you could probably figure out what I was saying if you were familiar with the channel. It's a common function of language. But where does language come from? Language is genetic. No, not like that. Languages do, however, adapt to their environments, much like how organisms evolve over time. Latin, which was spoken by the ancient Romans, broke off into Spanish, French, and Italian, and more. In this way, Latin is the common ancestor of all of these languages, which is why they're all Romance languages, spoken by the ancient Romans. Latin itself has a common ancestor. It's called Proto-Indo-European and it's the language that's thought to have been spoken by everyone from the western coast of Europe to the southwestern coast of Asia. It's theorized that Proto-Indo-European and every language that's spoken on Earth today would have had a common ancestor. Although it's too far back for us to gather information on, this Proto-Human world language is a lost language. In fact, every 14 days, one of the world's 6,500 languages is lost. All of these languages, whether dead or alive, have things in common. For instance, phonemes, the smallest structure of a language. They're the vowel and consonant sounds that make up the words. And of these phonemes, what may be the most common is ma. This is the first meaningful sound produced by most humans, and not just the ones who speak English. That's no mistake either. Cross culture, this is one of the easiest sounds to produce. Something you could do as a little experiment is to go to Google Translate and type in the word mom, and then select another language, like Chinese, Japanese, Russian, Croatian, French, Spanish, and you'll realize that they all have a very similar sound. English has 44 of these phonemes. Ma is one of them. Lithuanian has the most, though, at 59. But the fewest goes to the Amazon. The language is called the Paraha, and it only has 11 sounds. If you're a man. If you're a woman, it has 10. But you don't need 11 sounds to have a complete language. In fact, we have made languages using fewer expressions than this. The device that you're watching this on is capable of expressing every single human language, but only uses outputs of a 1 or a 0. And we could do the same thing with spoken language. All you need to do is add a symbol to every combination of the two expressions, and you've got yourself a fully functional language, just divided among two things, the same way that English is divided among 44 things. Now this is possible, but it's not practical. It would take a lot of recursion, or the repeating of an expression to produce meaning. Sign language and gestures activate the same parts of the brain as spoken language, most notably the Broca's area and Wernicke's area. In fact, you'll probably find that it's harder to talk without gesticulating than it is to gesticulate feels natural, and it feels unnatural not to do it. Blind people, who have never seen another person gesticulate, still gesticulate. And babies, well, they gesticulate before they articulate. Gesticulations are often used in the wild by gorillas and chimpanzees and bonobos, and so it's theorized that language just evolved as a way to better articulate what we were already doing with our hands. Gestures are also far more universal than any language. Waving hello, asking someone to come here, and saying you're okay are widely recognized. If you were to go back in time a few centuries ago, wherever your language is spoken, you would quickly lose the ability to communicate with those around you. That's because a few hundred years ago, English wasn't English, it was Old English. And Old English is basically a different language. You wouldn't even be able to write to communicate with other people as they would have had a different letter system. But if you wanted to get a point across, you could point and find other commonalities through gestures. Studying language and studying anything in this way is a lot like trying to rebuild a house that you've never seen after a fire. We're reconstructing our knowledge. We can never know these things in the same way that we can know that the earth is round or that vaccines are safe. Not knowing is a big part of the never-ending pursuit of knowledge, and this means that we can always be curious. And thank you for watching.
you can also gesticulate towards the subscribe button, which is my face, and hit the bell to always be notified when I make videos like this, which are usually on Monday. And thanks for watching.